My name is Doug Ayers, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how we can use Process Builder to automatically update the related record of a task when it becomes completed. Two years ago, Ahmed submitted this idea on the Idea Exchange to make this possible within Process Builder because at the time it was not trivial to do. In fact, a year ago, I blogged how we could make this possible using lookup fields as a workaround, adding custom lookup fields to the task or event object. But now, in the Spring 17 release, this is very easy to do, and uh, kudos to the platform team for bringing this to us. So let's get started. In Setup, we'll create our new process. We'll call this Update Case When Activity Logged. We'll run this whenever a record changes. The object that we want Process Builder to run on is task. And we want this to run whenever the record is created or updated because we're going to look at specifically when the status becomes completed. We'll add our criteria and we'll have two conditions. We're looking to see if this is completed and is related to a case. So in our filter criteria, we're going to set the first condition looking at the status of the task and does it equal the pick list that I'm looking that I'm interested in the value completed our second condition because the related field on a task could potentially point to almost any object in your org the task could be related to an account a contact case etc we want to narrow down which record or which object this task is being logged against. So our second condition is to look at the first three uh, characters of the related to ID, also known as the what ID, and this will tell us what object the activity is being logged against. So this is also known as inspecting the object key prefix. And you can Google that to learn what they all are. But the easy way to find out is to look at the first three letters of the ID of any record of the object you're interested in. In our scenario, we're wanting to automate updates to the case object when tasks are logged against it. So the object key prefix for cases is 500, 500. So that's what I want to put into my process builder so that this logic only runs when a completed task related to a case occurs. We'll click, and we only want this to happen the first time it becomes completed. So we're going to click on this advanced uh, section here. We'll click save. And then in our immediate actions, what do I want to do? Well, I want to update a related record. So we'll choose update records, and we'll call this update case is our action name. Now I need to pick that related record. And this is the part, the enhancement that Salesforce has made that makes this solution so easy. In the record type, we select a record related to the task. And what I'm going to type in here is the object that I'm interested in. So I want to update cases, right? So I could type in case and I'll have this option to choose related to case. If I was wanting to update an account that was related, I could choose account. I could also try and choose opportunity. See how easy this is? And we'll choose related to case. We'll choose that one. And so what is happening behind the scenes is if the task is in fact related to a case, then Salesforce will be able to run this update action against the case object. Now, if we were to try and run this update action and the task was actually related to an account, then the update would not work, right? Because that tasks related to ID didn't actually point to a case. So you just have to know a little up front what your task is related to so that you run the appropriate action. Now, within our update records action, what do we want to do? In my case, I want to change the status to the working pick list. 
but perhaps I only want to do this for the first logged activity. So I might add some conditions ahead of time. So I'm only going to set it to working if the status of that case was already the value of new. That way, if the case had been completed or was already in an escalated or some other status, I'm not reverting it. But if that was your use case, you wouldn't necessarily have to have this filter criteria at the front. I'll click Save. And I'm going to activate my process. Now let's go over to our case here. We see that it is currently in the new status. And what I want to do is log an activity. I'll click Save. And we notice here the task is related to a case, correct? And we're going to be looking for in Process Builder that the logged activity does return to a case before we execute our custom logic. Click Save. Process Builder runs. And we now see that our status has been automatically updated to working. No more needing to have triggers. No more needing to have uh, hacks or workarounds. You can natively do this with Process Builder fairly simply with a three-step process. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.